Welcome to Gregory's Physics Excel video number four. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Gregory Excel Lessons uh, 1 to 4, click on the link below the video. Hey, we're on the sheet formula inputs 2. The red ones are always the answer. The blue ones always have the template for us to fill out. And this is our uh, concluding video of this four video series. And we're going to do uh, plot this blue theoretical line, which we saw how to do in video two, and then the actual data points, which you saw in video one. We're also going to see how to create a formula, a little bit more complicated formula than the one we did a few videos ago. So this is the end result here. All right, we've got to click on our formula input sheet. Our first step is we're going to calculate a formula, copy it down. Then we can use the uh, M1 and the, or the variable and the function theoretical value, plot it, and then plot these actual data points. Now, we're going to have to create a formula here, and it's based on this formula here, acceleration equals, and then in parentheses, this is how we would draw it on a piece of paper, right? M1 divided by M1 plus M2, close parentheses, times the G. Now, when we get to our Excel formulas, we're going to write the formula slightly different. Now, I'm going to zoom in here so we get a better view here. Let's go, let's go ahead and build our formula and see the differences between how you write it on paper. And also, we're going to see another interesting point about cell references. Two videos ago, we talked about cell references. But here, for any one of these cells, so this cell right here, I need the M1. That's the hanging mass. And I also need mass dragged across the table M2 and the gravity. So in this cell here, I need all three of those. When I get down here, I'm going to need this one plus these two variables up here. So this formula will have three formula inputs. The numbers are typed into the cells. When we create a formula, we use cell references. So these are called formula inputs. Let's build our formula right here. Equals our hanging mass divided by, and I'm copying it straight from here. Oh, but wait a second, I forgot this. In Excel, you do not have to type formulas exactly like you would do on paper. So, so far, Excel knows the order of operations. Multiplication and division are done left to right, so we don't need these outside parentheses. But we are going to need parentheses around this plus. This bar in handwritten math is like a grouping symbol, uh, parentheses. So we have to force the issue. Open parentheses, and then we have to say M1 plus, and notice I'm clicking on each one of those cells to put them into our formulas. Those are cell references, looking at formula inputs. Close parentheses, and then times the gravity. Now, we have our formula here. Two videos ago, we saw how to copy the formula, so let's try this. I'm going to enter this. Now, let's go ahead and point our selection cursor, and when we see our crosshair or angry rabbit, click and drag. And I want to drag it down just one, because I want to look at this. I'm going to click here and put it in edit mode, either double click or hit F2. Now, what happened here? We talked about this two videos ago. These are called relative cell references, so it's a position. This formula is always going to look at the M1, one to my left, which is perfect for M1. But what happened here? the B2 move to B3 because these are called relative cell references. Where is this B3 looking? Well, it's not really looking at B3. It's looking 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 above. So we cannot keep our formula like this. I'm going to click Escape and delete that. I have to come up here and hit F2. The important thing you want to see is B2 turn to B3 there and B3 turned to B4. So we, we need to amend this. The way you lock a cell reference, so again, the idea is as we copy this down, I always need to look at B2 and always look at B3, is you highlight the cell and hit F4. The F4 key puts the secret symbols in dollar signs. Now those are arbitrary dollar signs. Back in the beginning of the spreadsheets, they just decided, hey, when we're locking the cell references, we'll put a dollar in front of the column reference and a dollar in front of the row reference, right? Because row 2, column B. All right, again, those symbols are arbitrary. Now, all your cursor, it doesn't have, you don't have to highlight, but your cursor does have to be touching front, middle, or side, and then hit the F4 key, and it puts those dollar signs in. That locks those. Our formula will work perfect now, and how beautiful is this, right? 
we're doing this complicated formula. The M1s are going to vary as I copy it down, but not these two formula inputs. I'm going to uh, copy it down one just to look. I'm going to click here and put it in edit mode. That is totally beautiful. The two cell references for M1 are moving as I copy it down, but not those. I'm going to delete that. We saw this uh, trick in our last video. If you, you can, click on the fill handle. That little thing in the lower hand corner is called a fill handle. When you see your crosshair or angry rabbit, you can click or drag. But no way, might as well double click. Automatically sends it all the way down. Absolutely beautiful. Now, that's kind of a hassle to scroll all the way down. If you hold Control and Down Arrow, it jumps to the bottom value. Control down arrow. I can put this in edit mode, and sure enough, look at that. Imagine having to calculate that by hand. That'd be terrible. Excel is totally perfect for this. I'm going to click Escape and Control up arrow. Control up arrow jumps back to the top of the whatever data it is. Now we can plot. I'm going to highlight this whole data set, and as we talked in the last three videos, blanks all the way around the data. One cell in the data set selected. Control asterisk. Now I've highlighted everything. I go up to Insert, No Line. I have two variables. And I want to, this is the theoretical value. So we're going to use the smooth lines. Now we're going to clean this up a bit, do a number of things. I want to click here and immediately delete that legend. I want to point to the edge and click and drag down. Actually, I'm going to point to the corner. And when I see that cursor, I'm going to click and drag and make it a little bit smaller. Maybe I'll also put, cl click right here and click and drag in a bit, and then move it. After we're all done, you can make it at whatever size you want. Actually, if you uh, try to print this, you can print just the chart, and it prints out perfectly on an 8.5 by 11 sheet of piece of paper. All right, now let's first link this. As we've been done, done so far, make sure the solid line, then click up in the formula bar, type in equal sign, and click on the cell that has your label. I've already pre-made the label there, notice formula, enter. I want to change the font size, so I'm going to right click, go to the mini toolbar, and type maybe 10. Enter. All right, now let's click down here. Let's change the axis. I think I want to have increments of 0.2 and have the maximum value 1.4. Of course, you can right click and point to format axis, or you can use the keyboard shortcut Control 1. All right, so m maximum, 1.4. The unit, I'm going to say not 0.5, but 0.2. And then click uh, Close. There we have that. Let's go ahead and get rid of these lines. Be sure, and not that, but on the inside lines and hit Delete. We have to add some labels. I'm going to add my vertical label. I go up to the Chart Tools. Remember, you've got to select the chart first, Layout. Axis, I'm going to do vertical, rotated. Immediately, I'm going to either click up here or hit the F2 key and type an equal sign and click on that. Now, something interesting here. Last couple of videos, we did this a couple of ways. One time, we used a legend over here. Other times, we used the uh, category or variable name at the top of the column. But we have two values we're going to plot. And I want these in the legend. So I went ahead and put a vertical, the label out here. Now, that's a formula. When I hit Enter, I, I see what I want. Because both of these are in the same unit. They're acceleration uh, mat, uh, meters per second squared. One is theoretical, one is plotted. All right, uh, let's do this axis right here. And we can link this one to that cell. So I go up to axis, horizontal. Hello. F2, type an equal sign and click right there. There's our formula. When I hit Enter, I have my label. Now, we want to add these extra values here. With the chart selected, and this is perhaps the most important trick in all of charting, because usually you set your data up, you create a chart, and usually it, it plots it correctly. But a lot of times, especially for some of the more advanced charts, you have to manually add data series to the chart. So you go up to Chart Tools, and it's on the Design. Select Data. This is the real power. 
we can click here and edit because sometimes it guesses wrong, especially with the labels. Notice this is the series. These are the numbers. Over here are the axis label called categories. That's on the horizontal. We want to add. It says, where is the name? I'm going to click right here for plotted. Actually, I can, if I don't like that word, I can change that word later. But these are the actual uh, data points. I'm going to click on my x values right in this text box and highlight them. I'm going to click down here. And sometimes the y's and in text box in the charting wizard comes with an equal sign and an array syntax and a 1. That is really a lot of trouble. Sometimes when you highlight it and select, it doesn't work. So I always delete it first. I make sure it's totally gone. And then I simply highlight my y values. Now I'm going to click OK. Now it'll misinterpret this. I'm going to click OK. You can see clearly we have two plotted sets of numbers. I'm going to click OK. It's misinterpreted it. We talked about this in video one and two. The smooth line is for theoretical. When we're plotting points, we do not want the smooth line. So we actually have to click on this. It just took it by default because that was already the line there, that blue line. But no problem. Select, click on it, right click, change series chart type, or you can simply click it and come up to the Change Chart Type button. We want to come over to XY Scatter, and you can see it just picked it up. So I'm going to click there. Click OK. Ah, totally cool. Now maybe those are too big, so you select on one of them. Remember, all elements in the chart can be formatted. I'm going to use Control-1. Marker Options, built-in, whatever, whichever one. And there's some op different options there. I'm just going to change the size. I don't know which one, maybe like that. Click Close. All right, so we're almost done here. This is looking pretty awesome. One last thing, we need to add a legend. So I'm going to go to Layout, Legend. Now, I would actually like it right in the middle. I don't think I see one here that says in the middle. But I'm just going to pick, um, say, on the right or left or wherever. Now I'm going to select this, and I know I can format. Control-1 to format any elements. Show legend without overlapping. I'm just going to uncheck this. Unchecking this allows me to move it wherever, and it will be overlapped. So now I can simply move it right here, say like that. OK, so that's looking pretty good. Now, formulas. Notice this is a formula. That means it's calculating the result based on this and these points here. The actual reason that spreadsheets were invented back in 79 by Frankston and Bricklin were exactly for this reason. You put numbers in cells, and when you change the formula inputs, we're just about to change that 0.75 to 0.8, everything will update. Now think about how profound this is. All of these formulas will update. And since these formulas are linked to there, and this chart is linked to there, everything will update. So let's go ahead and change it. This is why you do it in Excel, right? So I'm going to change this to 0.8. And before I hit Enter, take your, just look over here and Enter. Sure enough, it changed. I'm going to change it to 0.9. Absolutely beautiful. 0.6, totally cool. So 0.75. All right, so we did a lot in these four videos. We saw how to set up data. X is always, or in our case, this was a function in M of the uh, hanging mass. But whatever the independent variable is, that's to the left. Y's are to the right. We saw for theoretical values, you can use the smooth line. For actual data points, we use the uh, markers or individual points. We also saw how to create formulas. In the, we saw how to use relative cell references, and these are called absolute cell references. We saw how to do labels, format all sorts of different elements with Control-1. We saw how to change both the axes, the uh, max, the increment. We saw how to link labels, and we saw how to change formula inputs. All right, uh, we'll see you next video.